Now, if we um, uh, have your technicians um, stay up with me with this one for a little bit, okay? okay. Um, because if you know, there's supposed to be an eagle there, right? Right. But that's not what was on the original dollar, you know, the, the original seal? Yes. If we go to the next figure, take a good look at that and tell me what it is, Kevin. Oh, uh, boy, that's uh, interesting. It doesn't really look exactly the same. It almost looks like a hawk. You're close. If you compare it to the hieroglyphs on, uh, of, the, of, e of Egypt, yes, that is the same symbol as the phoenix bird. Oh, really? Yes. Hey, YouTube World Harvest, there's plenty of hope all as well. Thanks for stopping by check out the video please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe also i would like to say thank you to my new subscribers and also thank you to my past subscribers as well so today i want to discuss america being reborn as the new atlantis also i will discuss a little bit about the super bowl halftime show and tie that in to what i'm talking about so let's start connecting some dots for you guys and answer some questions that may be circulating in your brain. So what's in front of you is said to be the ancient ruins of Atlantis, that mythical place that sank underneath the water. It was have said to have existed during the pre-flood world, that's during the days of Noah. And we know about a great flood because scriptures tells us that God brought in a great flood and destroyed everything. And everyone, except Noah and his family, who survived on the ark. And yet still, after the flood, memories of Atlantis abound among the members of the ancient mystery religions, those who were initiated into the secrets. And they wanted to resurrect it one day. And eventually, a land mass was found. And they chose that particular new land mass to be the philosophical empire of the new world order. They said that that new landmass will become, would become the new Atlantis. And that landmass was called America. And that's where we are today. But he was more. On Francis Bacon's 60th birthday, Ben Johnson offered a toast to him in the form of a poem written in Masonic code. The secret message that runs through the poem shows that Francis Bacon was being honored not only on account of the anniversary of his natal day, but as the secret founder of the literary Rosy Cross, the Rosicrucian Fraternity, and the Masonic Brotherhood, and that his royal descent was well known to the heads of the Brotherhood. That would explain why Bacon's New Atlantis was reported to contain the key to modern Masonic rituals. It is widely accepted that America is the new Atlantis. Why the new Atlantis? Because among other things on this soil, those who lived on Atlantis would reincarnate to work out their fiery destiny, to meet their karma in this very dark cycle as we are facing Atlantean karma today, to triumph over it, to call forth the judgment of those fallen ones reincarnated who caused the sinking of Atlantis. So did you guys catch that? Because I want you guys to understand that the nation that I was born in, and I'm sure many of you were born in, America, that it had a secret history or secret destiny the whole time. You know, all of, these, all of these things were supposed to be hidden from us. We're not supposed to figure this stuff out. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, who guides us in all truth, God reveals this stuff to us so we can know what's going on. Now, the word Atlantis, it should ring a bell with you guys. There's movies, there's TV shows about uh, places called Atlantis. If you've ever seen uh, the movie Aquaman, there's a kingdom of Atlantis under the water which represents the hidden kingdom that was sunk uh, by God during the Great Flood. Uh, the city of Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, was named after the city Atlantis, the Atlantic Ocean. 
Paradise Island, Bahamas, there's a resort called Atlantis. So I want to read something for you guys about the secret destiny of America. It's a book by Manly P. Hall, and it's titled The Secret Destiny of America. And it says, world democracy was the secret dream of the great classical philosophers. Toward the accomplishment of this greatest of all human ends, they outlined programs of education, religion, and social conduct directed to the ultimate to the ultimate achievement of a practical and universal brotherhood. And in order to accomplish their purpose more effectively, these ancient scholars bound themselves with certain mystic ties into a broad co-fraternity. In Egypt, Greece, India, and China, the state mysteries came into existence. The state mysteries are uh, the knowledge that the fallen angels taught man. They call it the mystery. The mysteries are the mystery religions. Orders of initiated priest philosophers were formed as a sovereign body to instruct, advise, and direct the rulers of the state. Did you guys catch that? I'll read it again. In Egypt, Greece, India, and China, the state mysteries came into existence. Orders of initiated priest philosophers were formed as a sovereign body to instruct, advise, and direct the rulers of the state. Well, this secret body still exists today. They order, they advise, and they instruct all presidents and prime ministers across the world. Let's continue. Thousands of years ago in Egypt, these mystical orders were aware of the existence of the Western Hemisphere and a great continent, which we call America. The bold resolution was made that this Western continent should become the site of the philosophic empire. Just when this was done is impossible now to say, but certainly the decision was reached prior to the time of Plato, for a thinly veiled statement of this resolution is the substance of his treatise on Atlantic Islands. One of the most ancient of man's constructive ideals is the dream of a universal democracy and a cooperation of all nations in a commonwealth of states. The mechanism for the accomplishment of this ideal was set in motion in the ancient temples of Greece, Egypt, and India. So brilliant was the plan and so well was it administered that it has survived to our time and it will continue to function until the great work is accomplished. And so that's the great work that has been, the world has been directed to feet, to finish the great work of the new world order. It was started in Babylon, but when God came down and confounded the languages, he cut the plan short. And so they decided to move on and they reconstructed a new plan and decided that America was going to become the new philosophic empire for the new Atlantis, a nation reborn. The plan survived all that, all that time through history, all throughout history. And that's why these presidents are all from the same bloodline, because they got to keep the plan going unbroken. They would not let anybody step into the, pres the presidency of the White House who's not a part of the plan and who's not of the bloodline. Herein lies another similarity between Bacon and Columbus. America is the land of their dreams. America, the land of their dreams. Jerusalem recovered and new Atlantis reincarnated. How did Bacon and Columbus make their mark in America? To answer this, we must consider four things. First of all, the role of the Masons in the American Revolution. Second, the Masonic symbology in our great seal and flag. Third, the mystery of Bruton's Church in Williamsburg, Virginia. And four, the wave of religious fervor of the Great Awakening and millennialism. All this combined to bring about the restoration of Israel and Judah in the new Atlantis. First of all, we look at Bacon in the New World. Freemasonry gave Francis Bacon the organization he needed to lay the foundation of the utopia he envisioned in the New Atlantis. His embryonic plans were largely unknown, 
Yet when gestation ended, a new nation was born, the USA. Only a few obscure clues directly tie Francis Bacon to the new world. And now that gets us to the Super Bowl. And I'll try to run through this real quick. Um, I plan on coming back to do a video at some point, you know, talking about the commercials that was played during the Super Bowl and also giving more detail about the Super Bowl halftime show. But for now, I want to talk about the Phoenix bird to tie it into America being reborn. America being reborn is the new Atlantis. Do you guys see the title of this article? Judge the Jewels, Usher's Epic Super Bowl, Man Broach was a Phoenix. Did you guys catch that when you watched the Super Bowl? Did you realize that he had a Phoenix bird on his jacket? I saw it immediately and was like, wow, okay, here they go. And so, um, he has a Phoenix bird on his, on, his, on his jacket, and he's also wearing a glove on his left hand. That's symbolizing the left hand path. Seeing the occult word at two paths, there's the left hand path and the right hand path. The left hand path is sinister. It means darkness, death, destruction, chaos, you know, demonic. And that's the direction that we're moving in with this coming new world order. America's getting ready to crash and burn like the Phoenix bird and be reborn as a new Atlantis. So, when the chaos hits and the grid goes down and the lights go off and all the chaos and the anarchy and then they may do Project Blue Beam as well with a stage alien invasion, everything's going to be seeming, everything will seem crazy and chaotic. Just know in your mind that it's all planned and that they're trying to move us in a certain direction. Just keep that in mind when the chaos hits. And for those of you who are thinking that this will all go away once Donald Trump is in office, you actually uh, been deceived. Donald Trump would not stop. This plan has been put in place since, for centuries because he's a part of it. You may not want to hear it, but it's the truth. Now let's read a little bit about this Phoenix bird. It said, Usher first appeared in a very custom, sparkly all-white custom dose and Gabbana outfit topped by a white coat covered in patches of crystal embellishment. He then threw off the top layer and revealed a slouchy, more casual white jacket with an enormous bird brooch on the left side. I assume the brooch was likely a crystal piece made to accessorize the outfit, but Dos and Gabbana's Instagram refers to it as a phoenix pin made of diamonds and rubies. There it is. A phoenix pin made of diamonds and rubies. Here's uh, another picture of it. Wearing the Phoenix pin, it says, uh, Usher, uh, he wore a custom asymmetrical jacket with a Phoenix pin encrusted with diamonds and rubies. Another thing from the halftime show, not sure if you guys caught it, but Usher was standing on the stage and the stage turned into a big clock. And, you know, it started and when it got to seven o'clock, Usher said, let it burn. And the clock turned into a phoenix bird, and the phoenix bird started burning. And that's what you see here. Fire and the phoenix bird was burning. Again, symbolic, and they were sending a message to those in the know who were able to understand all this stuff that America's getting ready to go down in ashes like the phoenix bird, and the new Atlantis will be, be, will be reborn in these ashes. Here's Usher. Again, with Marina Abramovic. Now, I did a video about her and her spirit cooking. I will link her video below. And just watch that video, and it will tell you everything you need to know about who this woman is and why she's with Usher. See, Usher was initiated a long time ago. So was his co-partner, Alicia Keys, who he did the halftime show with. Here she is, throwing up the bafflement. You know, she's doing the symbol of the idol shepherd. I also did a video called the idol shepherd. Take a look at that. There are two shepherds. Um, one, the true shepherd is Jesus Christ. The fake, false, artificial shepherd is Lucifer. And she's telling you that she follows Lucifer. He's, you know, made ways, him and his fallen angels, they made a way for her to have a distinguished career. As they do, not just her, but to a lot of entertainers and musicians who, you know, take the oath. 
I did a video about the Idle Shepherd, as I mentioned. You know, take a look at it. Another thing, um, Alicia Keys was dressed in all red. What does that have to do with anything? Well, all red, that scarlet red. If you open up your Bible to the book of Revelations, chapter, I think, 11, uh, verse 4, um, where it talks about the scarlet beast, uh, the woman, uh, arrayed in purple and scarlet, she was playing the whore of Babylon. That's what she was uh, characterizing. Uh, on the stage that's why she was in all red last year it was um rihanna she was dressed in all red all this stuff is symbolic and so um when they do these halftime shows there's always something there to be deciphered and so i just want to leave you guys with that so that's all i have for you guys until my next video i love you continue to pray without ceasing talk to you soon god bless Okay. You'll, you'll see just um, a blown up version of the pyramid on the back of a dollar bill. Now, when we take a look at the very top of it, it says in Latin, annuit corruptus, and directly underneath the pyramid, novus ordus seclorum. Now, translated from the ancient Latin, annuit corruptus, novus ordus seclorum means announcing the birth of a new world order. Hmm. Now, at the base of the pyramid, you can see um, Roman numerals. It's MDCCLXXVI. Mm -hmm. That is the year 1776. But it's not talking about July 4th. Right. Which, which you know, is supposed to be our day of independence. No, it's actually referring to May 1st, First. 1776, in which the order of the Illuminati was officiated. And that would go it's back to Adam Weissop. Right, Dr. Adam Weishaupt himself, the very first head of the order. Now, if we take a look at the pyramid itself, um, it is made up of 13 steps. Now, in the order of the Illuminati, there are two particular occult systems. One is known as numerology, which is where you assign numbers to letters. Now, in Gematria, Gematria will give you the definition to those numbers. So in other words, numerology assigns, gematria defines. That's how, hmm. I, how I explain it. Okay. Now, in gematria, the number 13 stands for depravity and rebellion. Right. Now, when we look at the capstone itself, you can tell that it's three-sided, um, but whether it's four-sided or not, it's not supposed to be because look at the way the um, pyramid is built. You can tell by looking at the shaded part yes. on the left hand side, it's four sided. You can't with the eye because those um, three sides represent the beast, the false prophet, and the antichrist. Got it. In the center of that capstone, you will note that there is a left hand eye. The left, um, in the occult world, the left hand always represents the dark side. The right hand represents the light side. Got it. That eye represents the eye of Lucifer. Hmm. Some people say it's the eye of providence, the eye of God, but that's incorrect because if that's true, the capstone is facing in the wrong position. The point would have to be pointed down, which would show God looking into the affairs of man. Got it. And also, you go back to like Horus and stuff like that, with the, which the Masons talk about, where the one-eyed man in the land of the blind is king. Uh, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But in this reverse position, this is man invading the heavenlies, just Got like it. they tried in the Tower of Babylon. Babylon. Of course. So, so, in short, what the whole seal is saying is that on May 1st, 1776, a new world order had been created. It would be based on depravity and rebellion and headed by Lucifer. Wow.